This is Anna Diffin Teaches from NADEPS, Recall Reduction Utilising PID General Purpose. So the setup is simple. You have just built your ship, and then when you're doing some basic combat testing, your ship turns to fire, and then as soon as it actually fires, it actually fires recoil, capsizing itself. This is very irritating. There are a few solutions, but the method we're going to be going through today is utilizing the PID general purpose. Firstly, add roll thrusters to each side of the ship. These are not in a very aesthetic position at the moment, but this is just for training purposes. For, for best purposes, for best practice, you also want to put one facing upwards as well, though that isn't always possible for the aesthetics of a craft, so I'm not going to utilize that in this episode. Next, and probably most important thing for utilizing PID, you have to set the thrusters manually. So this is the right hand side, so I have to set it roll right hand side. And these ones I have to set on the left hand side. This is very important, otherwise the PID will not know what each thruster does, and so nothing will happen, or it will just capsize your craft even further. There are actually two PID blocks. There's the PID block in the AI section, what I will refer to as the PID AI, and the one we are using today, the PID general purpose. This one I find is useful in more situations. It does not matter where you put the PID on your ship as it will always do the controls. However, it is important to ensure that it is defended since if this little block gets destroyed, your ship will probably sink or capsize, or generally spiral out of control because you are utilizing PID to stabilize it. It does not get targeted by aim point in the same way an AI mainframe does, so you don't necessarily need to put it in such a highly defended position. So, go into the Q menu of the PID, and you are met with this mess of information, and it's completely bonkers, and doesn't make a lot of sense. We are trying to prevent our ship from capsizing, so we want to set it for roll. This means that if I now release my ship, it is now generating a graph as it's trying to maintain its roll position. But if we add a ship in, oh look, it's not actually doing anything. We can see the PID is trying to do something, but the ship is still capsizing. Nowhere near as bad, but this can be massively improved. So the first thing I noticed is that my ship was still swaying from side to side and still is a little bit at the moment. This generally means that the gain probably isn't high enough. So I'm going to increase the gain tenfold straight away. I can now monitor the graph. So it is responding to the recoil. I'm just going to reduce the derivative time by three. And already you can see it is being more stable here and you can see the ship no longer is moving as much. It is responding to the recoil. You might be thinking I've done something to the ship else, but other than PID, but no, if I remove the control task, you should see immediately my ship begins to start swinging and swaying all over the place. I put it back on the roll and immediately the yellow line shows that it is trying to level it out. And in fact, that is all it's going to be required for reducing this recoil. I've increased the response rate, and so it responds quickly and with the gain. High recoil would require more fiddling with ease. Important thing is that you will sometimes need to do pitch as well, particularly if you have not placed these thrusters in a very good location. Say if I just put one set at the front and one at the rear, then it will torque oddly around the center of mass. In fact, I will show that. A common problem you might be getting is this here. So this could be, is most likely caused because I have thrust coming from the side, but also it can be that the gain is just too high. And so it's actually out, it's saturating the output. It's trying to correct far too strongly. So if I just reduce this massively down to here, you'll notice that my ship is becoming a considerably more stable. So despite the fact that my thrust is in odd locations around the edge of the hull, the PID system is clever enough to be able to cope with that 
and correct it anyway. This means that for very large ships or very unstable ships and when ships are being damaged in combat, the PID system can still be utilized to ensure your ship will float and remain stable. I mentioned that having the reverse thrusters on the top of each side will actually make it more, more easy to set up. This basically makes it much, much, much more stable as it will prevent it from overcompensating. So as you can see now, it is completely flat, no movement whatsoever. So here you can see the settings of the PID. You can see the very slight variations as the cannons are firing, but otherwise, there's not that much oscillation of the ship itself. If I remove these thrusters though, the upwards facing ones, and compare, we'll see a much, much greater movement. And it's this is not only because it's, it's less thrust, but also there's greater like miniature oscillations because it can't dampen these recoil forces as quickly. It is possible to utilize this roll PID recoil reduction on thruster craft and planes. However, you must remember that this will prevent your, your plane or hovercraft from rolling, which, because it makes it more stable, and that will make you a much, much easier target for ships to shoot at you. The oscillations and rolling of airplanes are an absolutely fantastic defense for detection systems and as, as missiles and cannons are not able to track you as well. If you're flying more stably, you are very easy to hit. Though, that's all there is to it. Recoil reduction utilizing PID general purpose is not that difficult. Thanks for watching.